prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, we pause to bless this Christmas manger scene. The practice of erecting such mangers was begun by St. Francis of Assisi as a means to set forth the message of Christmas. When we look upon these figures, the Christmas gospel comes alive, and we are moved to rejoice in the mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God. May all who delight in these objects come to the knowledge and joy of salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, you came into the world in obedience to the Father's will. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face Him confidently when He comes again as our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin 
your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Poseidon and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites, and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it, Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the word of truth and life. Praise the God of all creation, the mercy and compassion. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the word of truth and life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the word of truth and life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, 
But before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention. When behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the time's finally arrived. Our days of watching and waiting and preparing are finally over. And today, the celebration begins. If it's not purchased or wrapped or packed or shipped or decorated, it's probably not going to be. So just kind of give it a rest. Set the details aside this evening and rejoice as we gather together to consider the event that changed the course of human history forever. It's Christmas. And my prayer today is that Jesus will be born in us, and live in us, and be our reason for living, and loving, and caring, now and every day of our lives. Now, having said that, I know that this is also a day of surprises. In fact, I think that's a word that best describes Christmas in this modern day. Packages under the tree hold surprises that wait to be unwrapped. Family or friends are going to travel, great distances some, and show up at our homes unexpectedly. Surprise, they'll say, as we open the door. I overheard one man at the mall when he asked for this small, expensive bottle of perfume for his wife, said it's a surprise, and the man said, yes it is, she's expecting a trip to Hawaii. (laughs) Surprise! (laughs) Wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall of that house? (laughs) Christmas is all about surprises. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that she would conceive and bear a son, and he would be the savior of the world, I'm sure Mary was surprised. How can this be, she asks the angel Gabriel. When Joseph learned that his fiancée was pregnant, I'm sure he was surprised, probably shocked, a little angry, until the angel told him the rest of the story. Elizabeth, I'm sure, was surprised when she discovered that she was pregnant in her old age. And then the angel announced that their child would usher in news of the Messiah, for whom the world had waited for a thousand years. But I'm here today to tell you that nobody was more surprised than the shepherds near Bethlehem when those angels appeared to them and announced the birth of the Son of God. They were shepherds, after all, uneducated, irreligious, uncouth, and unlikely. But it was to them that this good news first came. Do not be afraid, the angel said, but of course they were afraid. I would imagine they were terrified. I can imagine that the shepherds just hugged the ground out of fear. But the angel persisted. Don't be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you this day in the city of David there has been born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now what happened next is a marvelous miracle. One of many 
that happened on that first Christmas night. When the angels departed from them, the shepherds said to one another, Well, let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing which the angel has made known to us. And they went. The shepherds actually went. Scripture says that the shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found it just as they had been told. But that's because they were shepherds. They didn't form a committee. They didn't stop to consider the economic impact. They didn't take a poll. They didn't call in consultants or request more information from the angel. They went in haste, immediately. And they found it exactly as the angel said it would be. But what does all that mean to us, some 2,000 years removed from that event? In an age when shepherds have all but disappeared from our world, an age when the town of Bethlehem is kind of an epicenter of all kinds of conflict and bitterness, and when we seem to approach everything with haste, except considering whether there is any room for Jesus in our lives, what does it all mean to us today? In this present age, well, three things, I think. The first is that Jesus still wants to come into the lives of the plain and ordinary people of this world. Shepherds were not rocket scientists. They were common folk whose lives were filled with all kinds of menial tasks and significant challenges. And often, they were just trying to survive. My friends, we've met the shepherds. And they are us. Nothing special, nothing extraordinary, but chosen by God to receive the greatest gift ever. This very night, a Savior has been born for you. I know for a fact that there are many in our midst whose lives are really hard. You wonder where your life's headed. You wonder if anything really counts for anything these days. You wonder if God hears your prayers. Well, welcome to the Shepherd Guild, my friend. A Savior has been born for you today. The second has to do with fear. Do not be afraid, the angel said. Well, easier said than done. When quarantine is the new buzzword, when coronavirus threatens our health and floods our minds, when our loved ones face illness and death, when money's short, when hope is fading, of course we become afraid. To be afraid is to be human. To simply say, do not be afraid, doesn't cut it. But that's not what the angel said. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news with great joy. A Savior has been born for you. God is here in this fractured and hurting world. God is with us in the dark nights and in the hopeless situations. God promises never to abandon us. And more than that, God has promised that because of Jesus, that we will live forever. His love will do business with our fear. And the final thing is this. The shepherds went to Bethlehem. They didn't have to go. The angels didn't command that they go. God didn't require it. But the invitation was offered. This shall be a sign for you, a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. The shepherds went straight to Bethlehem. Not to see if it was true, but because they believed it was true. They knew that the world had suddenly changed And they wanted to celebrate that fact. And I think that's why we're here tonight as well. Some may have come because your parents made you come. Some may be here because a spouse required it. Or your children guilted you into coming. Well, that's okay. We're just glad you're here. But most have come because like the shepherds, you believe the message of the angels. A Savior has been born. One who will bridge the gap between a sinful world and a gracious God. So you've come. 
God has touched you with a promise that has taken root in your heart. That though you are ordinary, that though you are sinful shepherds, and so am I, a Savior has been born for us. And we have a reason to celebrate. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. Surprise! Amen. And now let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Reminded of God's steadfast love and fidelity revealed through this newborn child, we bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church, the body of Christ, and for her prophetic witness to all, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, and for the salvation of souls, let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, suffering, and dying, and for those who love and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For continued blessings upon this community, and for the grace to follow where God leads each one of us, let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Gene Stump and Mary Gallagher, for whom this Mass is celebrated, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who will be traveling this evening and over these holy and holidays, that they may be kept safe, let us pray to the Lord. And now we pause to add our own intentions in silence. For these and all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, in Christ Jesus you fulfill your promises to Israel and make real your desire to be with the sons and daughters of humanity. Hear the prayers we offer you this evening, and we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, And with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down Your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time He was betrayed and entered willingly into His passion, He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Michael, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage and the privilege now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Thank you. Our second collection this evening is for Catholic Charities. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Well, the body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of Your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I appreciate your patience. I know a few of you are sitting in different pews than you normally sit in, but... We thank you for accommodating the, uh, we didn't know what to expect this evening. Doesn't look like it started snowing yet, which is a good thing. Uh, as you leave, if you would like, pick up one of these copies. I Heard God Laugh. It's the new book by Matthew Kelly. It's about prayer. It is an excellent book. So please take one of those with you as you go. And if you're so inquired to do this, this is a little thing that Monsignor uh, Jeremiah McSweeney, who you all have seen here uh, on a couple of Sundays, gave me. It's finding Bible, the, the books of the Bible. There's 16 of them on this page. They're hard to find. So if you'd like to take that as a little puzzle for Christmas, please do that as well. And our daily uh, devotions are also out there on that same table. So thank you all. I wish you a very Merry Christmas. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.